Welcome back to Green is Good, and we're so honored to have on the show today Dominique Smith. She's the executive director of the Los Angeles chapter of the U.S. Green Building Council. Welcome to Green is Good, Dominique. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be on with you guys. Oh, this is great to have you on. We're going to be talking about a lot of great, important topics with regards to the U.S. Green Building Council. But before we get to those topics, I would like you to share with our listeners first the Dominique Smith journey. How did you get to be so involved with green and sustainability and share a little bit about your journey leading up to your position at the U.S. Green Building Council? Oh, absolutely. I'd love to tell you just a little bit of how I got here. Um, I think I have perhaps an unconventional story. I grew up in Orange County, some would say behind the orange curtain. Um, although I don't wanna <laughs> I don't wanna say anything bad about Orange County because they're actually making wonderful strides in sustainability. Um, but however, um, had a wonderful upbringing, was a swimmer, you know, always enjoyed the outdoors. And that has really fueled my passion for sustainability. In our name, you'll see Green Building Council, but yep. we're more than just a building organization. We are all about ecology, urbanization, people, and ensuring that the environment is a healthy one for all of us and for generations to come. So I actually found the U.S. Green Building Council Around 2010, I had a real estate license. I was working downtown on a residential high-rise development, and it was one of the first lead new construction projects in downtown Los Angeles. Mm. So the question was, uh, what's the lead? What is the lead rating system, and why does it matter? Why do people coming into this building care? And so I had to find the answers to these questions. And so I, I called up the U.S. GDP because that's, that's what they do, right? Green building. <laughs> and um, so I was able to find the answers to my questions, find out why energy efficiency, water conservation, healthy materials, and access to transportation make a big difference when you're looking at one building as opposed to another. So... Um, there starts my introduction with, with the U.S. GDC in Los Angeles. <laughs> like many of our members, I got hooked. Um, I met a community of like-minded environmental advocates, and I started volunteering with the chapter. And so here I am. I'm going to fast forward us to, you know, it's about five, six years later, and I've gone from volunteer to now executive director of this U.S. Green Building Council here in Los Angeles. So it's been a wonderful journey along the way. I've met people that I consider my best of friends that um, I, I plan to work with and, you know, be in my life for, for the long term. And um, so I think, I think probably I'm a little bit unconventional in that, you know, I started as a volunteer and, and have grown as this market has grown. And... Um, you know, I'm going to say, typically, you don't find a lot of young female uh, leaders here here in the sustainability movement where we're coming, but um, I'm kind of one of the first, I would say, a pioneer in sustainability in, in Los Angeles. Well, we're so glad you're on today, and we're so glad the U.S. Green Building Council is being so well represented by you in the Los Angeles chapter area. You know, for our listeners out there that want to learn more about the U.S. Green Building Council and all the great work you're doing, Dominique, they could go to www.usgbc-la.org, usgbc-la.org. Today, we're going to be talking about your green janitor education program, which sounds funny on its face, but is very, very important to, uh, you know, uh, so much of what's going on with regards to the greening and making buildings more sustainable. So can you talk a little bit about what the green janitor education program is? Oh, absolutely. The green janitor education program is truly a program, as it says in its name, um, for janitors, it results in their certification. So um, we're all about 
you know, measuring skills, building skills, and then, you know, providing that seal of approval that we can stand behind that after undergoing this training program, the janitors are now able to be green advocates and, you know, have a seat and have a voice in the sustainability um, movement. And so the process for these green janitors includes uh, 30 hours of on-site training. So um, the Building Skills Partnership, who is one of our partners in this program, will be at the janitor's place of work um, over 15 weeks. So each week they undergo two hours of training. And this training is split up into different modules. Um, One is about green cleaning practices. One is about certification system. So examples of that would be the lead rating system, Energy Star, um, Eco Logo through UL, and all of the different symbols that you see, you know, you can see them going to the grocery store now. Um, there are many of these logos that are out there, but it's important to be able to determine how the work of the janitor relates to the certification of the building because they are highly intertwined. Um, so also part of this training, the janitors receive um, hands-on, real facilitated walkthroughs of their own building. So what happens is with their instructors, they are walking each floor of the building, looking at um, the plug loads, they're looking at um, in the restrooms, they're looking for leaks or um, running faucets or running toilets, and they're they're really encouraged and empowered to make notes about these items that have a huge effect on the energy and the water use in the building. So it's very practical, hands-on training that allows the janitors to speak up when they see something that, you know, could be improved. Um, Even another example being sorting practices. So talking about waste. Um, in different areas of the building. Sometimes waste is not sorted correctly, so maybe um, something that should not be in recycling ends up in recycling, contaminates that material, and then it now cannot be recycled for those bins. So janitors have the unique ability and unique perspective because they are the eyes and the ears of the building. They know every inch of that building that they work in. (laughs) They know right. who is recycling. They know um, who leaves all of their um, machines plugged in overnight when they actually should not be plugged in. So um, this has been a training that has had some, I would say, some even um, unintended uh, benefits. So we found that you know the janitors are now empowered. They have been working on their um, English skills as well um, to build their confidence in reading and writing and speaking. Um, and also, we have found this is one of the one of the most interesting items about this is that the janitors take this newfound knowledge home with them. They have seen a decrease in their own utility bills at home because now. <laughs> They are, they are, you know, preaching the good words to their families about taking shorter showers. Um, they're increasing even their own health at home by starting to grow their own fruits and vegetables. And it's a, it's a whole lifestyle and perspective change. So the things that you learn at work, you take home. It's kind of like in the school system. The things that um, kids are learning at school, you know, they come home and they tell you all about them. Um, Solar and recycling and all kinds of special things. So it's, uh, it's been really a great, a great journey that we've been on. With for, program. Um, most of the work took place in um, 2014 last year, training janitors. For our listeners out there, we've got Dominique Smith on with us today. She's the executive director of the U.S. Green Building Council for the Los Angeles chapter. And you can learn more about all the great work the U.S. Green Building Council is doing and Dominique's doing at www.usgbc-la.org. How did the Green Janitor Program come about and who are some of its partners, Dominique? Well, you know, this Green Janitor Education Program started as 
a conversation about four years ago between myself at U.S. Green Building Council LA, Aida Vargan at Building Skills Partnership, John Bartman with the SEIU, and Martha Cox from SOMA. We identified a real need within existing buildings, so we're talking about mainly commercial office, high-rise properties, that the trades, um, the people such as janitorial workers, electricians, day porters, et cetera, could really make an impact on how the building is run. And as we talked through the program, we, we realized we could create a curriculum that would absolutely make a difference in energy savings. We've got some huge goals here in Los Angeles and further within um, all across the state of California. Um, around energy reduction and around water conservation. And so this training program is really actually a very low-cost answer to have an immediate effect on uh, utility bills and the way that the building is maintained. And um, so we we went on a about an 18-month journey creating the curriculum for the program. And then we needed to find the building owners that wanted to give it a try. And luckily, within our membership and within Soma's membership, we have got some real pioneers out here. The uh, first building owners that, that wanted to give this a shot were JMB Realty. They are in Century City. They have a beautiful building, Constellation Place. It's a lease certified um, old commercial office building, and uh, they, they they saw where we were going with this, you know, operations and maintenance janitor education. They had already done some previous training work with building skills partnerships, so they they recognized that those trainers do a great job. They're engaging. They are. They deliver the material in an appropriate manner and at an appropriate level to work with each janitor. And um, so they said, they opened their doors and they said, come on in and, you know, here are our 26 janitors made in green. And um, so that was the first, that was the first building. They were quickly followed by classes at CDRE, DreamWorks. Uh, PCP, other commercial office buildings in our area. So now we have actually trained janitors in eight buildings here in Los Angeles. And there wow. are quite a lot more in the pipeline, I've got to say. Um, for this and is it office only or is warehouses and other type of buildings uh, uh, included? This is office only at the moment. However, right. we are exploring hospitality as the next market for green janitors. And, is, and it covers energy, but does it also cover water use and other sustainability issues within regards to the ecosystem of a building? Yes, absolutely. So the energy and the water are two of the most impacted um, areas that, that this program really drives home. Um, there's also training done on recycling and waste diversion. Also, an important piece of this um, is health and safety. There are, are two hours of this training program dedicated to that area. And, you know, this is, this is another aspect that I really find value in with the Green Janitor Education Program. And this is about human capital. This is about investing in the people that are in your building, that are stakeholders. And um, these janitors are you know, absolutely a key demographic. One thing that we have found from from our surveys of participants is that their personal health has, in, you know, really improved over the time of this program because they have um, reduced episodes of asthma um, due to now using the green cleaning products at work and at home, um, less coughing, less uh, watery eyes, all these things that can happen when you're in um, an unhealthy space or using chemicals that um, affect you. Um, so 
the, the health and safety aspect of this training is, is also a, a key piece. So we've got oh. energy, water, recycling, health, and um, green cleaning. And Dominique, as you said earlier, you know, not only do they go home and and culturally and from a DNA perspective, they've had a shift within themselves and they then make that paradigm shift back at home too, which they've made now in their office building. But doesn't it lead to say that now their resume, so to speak, their resume is now stronger because their skill sets are stronger and they're actually more valuable in terms of uh, their job worth, in terms of the job market, if they ever wanted to go become a janitor in another building or something, that they've become highly valued because you, you've you now given them more education and education that's very important for not only what they're doing today, but for future Oh, absolutely. I mean, you really hit on an important point there. Um, this certification can help janitors to move, you know, move along in their career pathway. Um, some janitors hope to become um, day porters or, um, you know, other, uh, other further steps along in their career. And this knowledge is really um, supporting their efforts in doing that. And I think one of the most important pieces is that the janitors understand why their practices and what they're doing in the building um, is important and why it matters. You know, a lot of janitors have been um, doing their their jobs for 25, 30 years, and they were never taught and it was never... Um, conveyed that their actions are really key in in the maintenance of the building and what they do on a daily basis matters. It matters to the tenants. It matters to, um, you know, visitors to the building and the way that they now understand how to do green cleaning and how um, green uh, materials and green soaps and, and chemicals work. All of that um, makes a big difference as they're as they're moving in their career journey. How do if janitors are listening to this or building owners are listening to this? Um, how how are you getting the word out? How do buildings sign up for this, or how do janitorial services or or buildings sign up for this great new program that you have? Well, you know this this program is really catching on. Um, last year it was catching on via word of mouth between building owners. Um, we're now actively searching for new buildings. And so people can actually email us. There's an email for the green janitors that I can give if, if you'd like me to. Go ahead, please. Great. It is green janitors at usgbc-la.org. That connects you directly with myself and with Aida Baragon from Building Skills Partnership for further information. Um, we also have produced a report that is available on our website for um, the, the in and out, the summary of what we found in 2014. So um, other cities are looking at bringing this program to their city after after we talk today and headed down to beautiful San Diego and we are meeting with employment training panels from um, all across California, New York, Chicago, and Washington DC to talk about how green janitors can come to markets in those cities as well. Awesome. Well, Dominique, thank you for all the great work you do, and thank you for being with us today on Green is Good. For our listeners out there that want to learn more about the U.S. Green Building Council, please go to www.usgbc-la.org. Thank you, Dominique, for being a green janitors and building champion. You are truly living proof that green is good.